Hello and welcome. It's my pleasure to introduce Dr. Temple Northup, who is the director of the School of Journalism and Media Studies here at San Diego State University. He received his Bachelor of Arts from Wake Forest University, his Master of Arts from Syracuse University, and his PhD from the University of North Carolina, Chapel Hill. Before joining the School of Journalism and Media Studies, he served as the director of the Jack J. Valenti School of Communication at the University of Houston. He was also the co-director of the Gulf Coast Food Project, for which he oversaw and promotes the study of food in the Texas Gulf Coast region. He also oversee, oversee and oversaw production of the documentary films and multimedia stories. Dr. Northup's research broadly seeks to understand how the media can influence our attitudes and behaviors and has published in a wide array of respected journals such as Media Psychology and Applied Cognitive Psychology. Popular with the media, he has been a regular guest on Houston Matters and his research has been featured everywhere from the LA Times to USA Today. Temple's also made an in-studio appearance in New York as a guest on the nationally televised Fox and Friends. I think this is particularly fun, uh, a fun note that before serving as the director of the Jack J. Valenti School of Communication, Temple worked in LA as a sitcom writer and was part of more than 180 episodes of prime time network television. Please welcome Dr. Temple Northup. Thank you very much, uh, Dean Shannon, for that introduction. Uh, and just this past week, since you mentioned uh, Los Angeles uh, and my how I used to be a writer out there, one of the shows I worked on uh, is now on Netflix. So I can go on. Uh, my daughter, who's nine years old, thought it was pretty cool that she could see my name as a written by credit on a TV show. Um, and anyway, thank you again, everybody, so much for joining in, for tuning in today as we have a little conversation about the School of Journalism and Media Studies. Just so you know what we're going to be doing, uh, I'll be talking for just a few minutes about the school and where we're headed. And then I'm going to turn it over to Scott Pansky, one of our wonderful graduates, to hear about how he's gotten involved in the program over the past few years. And after we both speak, uh, we'll be happy to answer any questions you have. So you can just drop them in the chat or the Q&A box anytime. And we'll uh, circle back to those once we've uh, both finished speaking. I wanted to do this event today in order to start connecting more with our JMS community, our alumni, our supporters, the local and national media organizations who, who really help us be the school that we want to be. And I do this so you can know more about what we're doing and what I see as the future of our program, but also for you to understand how critical your support and these efforts is and how you can be involved more. And let me start by saying how excited I am to be in San Diego, despite this uh, the truly crazy time we're living in. You know, I haven't even been to campus since I've started the job back in July. Uh, and, and just to be honest, you know, Dean Shannon mentioned I was the director of the Valenti School at, at the University of Houston before this. And I really loved that job. I loved Houston. I wasn't looking to leave. But when I heard about this opportunity and this opening, I was intrigued. And I was intrigued because I knew of the school. I knew of its positive reputation. I knew some of the faculty and just the talent of both those teaching and then also just the talent of the students uh, and alumni coming out of the program. And so I came here because I knew the, the, the school was already in really good shape. And so I thought of a book uh, that I read years ago by Jim Collins, uh, and the book's called Good to Great. And it focused on companies that move from being really good at what they do to being great at what they do. And that is how I see my role coming into the JMS. We're already a really good school. If I came in and just did nothing other than keep things moving, we'd be solid, there wouldn't be anything necessarily wrong. But I'm here to think about how can we move the school from just being a good school to being a great, to being an elite program in the school. And I believe that it's possible and I think it can even be done relatively quickly. And so let me highlight some of the things we're doing 
and where I want the school to be going. And our core mission is, of course, teaching our students. We're a public university, and above all else, that is what we're here for. And so as I look at what I think the future of the media industry is, something important for me to consider then is what are we teaching our students now to prepare them for the future? And from my perspective, I generally think of two broad areas in terms of where our courses are and what we're teaching our students. One is we're teaching them skills. So these are the things that they will use, tangible things that they will use when they go out and get a job. And the other area is the ability to think critically about the media and about topics more broadly. So thinking about skills, you know, our graduates go into the media industry. And so there are specific skills that are expected from our students in order to be successful. And although I'm here talking about preparing our students for the future, let me tell you something that may seem a little counterintuitive. The most important thing that we teach our students, a skill that we're honestly doubling down on and investing more and paying more attention is writing. And the reason we value writing so much is that it's the fundamental thing we all must do from that very first internship cover letter that, that you write as a student to creating a national campaign or writing a national story, writing is at the core of what we do. And so if you cannot write well, you just will not be successful. It's, it's really as simple as that. And so you'll hear me talk a lot about storytelling because I believe storytelling ultimately is what we do, whether we're a journalist or PR or advertising, we're telling stories. And the fundamental we tell stories is by writing them. Even things that end up being visual, they begin as written ideas. And so to be honest, I see a lot of programs around the country and they tend to invest heavily in making sure that they have courses and the latest and greatest technologies. It was a few years ago that my own alma mater where I got my MA, Syracuse University, they, got, they bought all of the faculty Google glasses. And so now it, looking back, what an incredible waste of time and resources that was. And so when you shift your focus to that, to just being on the cutting edge, you take away the basics um, from the students and that ultimately hurts them uh, both as they get into the job market and into the future. Now at the same time, we don't just focus on writing, we do focus on training our students on the current skills that we think they need. And that's something that we continually will be assessing throughout time. So do we need to have courses in every social media platform that, that, that might exist at, at any given time? Probably not, but do we need to understand things like how to visually tell stories or understand analytics on all the platforms so that we can create things and then understand their impact? That I would say yes. And so the reality is that whatever's happening today will be different tomorrow. So we must focus on change while adhering to the idea that we're teaching lifelong learners. The, the greatest example perhaps right now is, is something like TikTok. TikTok didn't even exist within the US just a few years ago, yet now companies have, have forged major relationships, news anchors and news uh, our organizations are all on it. So we can't teach our students what platforms are gonna be used in just a few years from now, but we can teach them how to understand stories and storytelling and how to assess the effectiveness on the, of those stories regardless of the platform they end up using. So we look to incorporate skills like things such as the Adobe Suite in our classes. So students have skills to create content that can go to any platform that exists. So that's our first bucket is really thinking about what skills that our students need in order to succeed right now. And then the second general area we teach relates to critical thinking. We think without that ability to think critically about what is being created, then we're gonna fall short of doing our job as educators if we don't teach our students that. And we accomplish this by training them to be critical consumers of the media, because if they're critical consumers, they ultimately will learn how to become critical creators. And we do this for more than just philosophical beliefs that students should be critical thinkers. Now, of course, we would all agree that critical thinking 
in general seems to be a skill that perhaps is missing in a lot of public discourse these days. But we do this because as media creators, we've seen countless examples of mistakes being made, mistakes where messages were created, stories were told that led to a backlash. And so we've been increasing the time we spend teaching critical media thinking skills. We've created courses examining the role of social media and society, of understanding more media more broadly as it interacts with individuals and cultures, cultures, courses in media law and ethics, courses that touch upon diversity, identity, and representation. And we hope that these courses will create future media practitioners who can critically think about media message they see and the media messages they create. And so as I look to the future and talk about how are we training the next generation of media professionals, that's what we're thinking about. We're thinking about critical thinking skills and fundamental skills, particularly related to writing, as those two things more than anything else will set our students apart from others and they will be on a path of success. So that's our focus, but we can't do that successfully in isolation, which is why we're holding this, this meeting and, and where you all come in. Our alumni and our media partners are a key ingredient to moving this program from good to great. And let me outline a few ways how. First, while we spend hours training the students in the classroom, the reality of going into the media industry is that our students need experiences in the real world while they're in college to best prepare them for success. And those experiences can happen through things like internships. So if you work at an organization that has interns, help us get our students in there. Let us know when you're searching. Help me make it so that our students are getting access to that type of training. And if your organization doesn't have interns, maybe you should figure out how we can add them. Reach out to us. But internships are just one way you can get our students help. You can come meet our students where they are now, which this semester and, and next semester is right here on Zoom. But you can come talk to classes when things have hopefully returned to normal soon. You can set up visits at your office for our students to come to. You can get involved with our student clubs. We have so many different student clubs that our students get involved with. So speak on panels there. Uh, speak on panels that the school offers. And, and don't always wait for us to come to you. Be proactive. You're here now, which which tells me that you wanna be involved. So reach out, think about how you might be able to connect and offer some sort of support is that is the cycle that will move us from good to great. We'll prepare our students in the classroom with help from the community. They'll get internships, interact with leaders in the media industry. They can then graduate prepared for success and begin their career. Down the road, they're then in a position to turn around and help the next generation of students in part because they recognize the help that they got. And when we create that cycle, it begins a movement and a culture within JMS students and alumni. And I also want you to know that part of this plan isn't just about asking you to get involved in giving back, but we wanna be involved in your lives. We're hoping to launch a series next year that's aimed at educating our grads about some of the trends in the media field so that when you graduate from us, your learning doesn't end, but it's really just the beginning. And that will create the next generation of storytellers who are best trained, best prepared, and the most connected and who will change the media industry. And so all of that brings me to our guest today, Scott Pansky. Scott is the co-founder of a top award-winning global public relations firm, Allison & Partners. He's based in Los Angeles and he's worked in the public relations industry for more than 28 years. He's very proud of working with some of the best talent in the industry, focusing cor on corporate consumer technology, public affairs, purpose, and social impact. When he founded Allison and Partners, his vision was to build a positive and entrepreneurial environment where talented people at all levels could do great work and thrive. Importantly for our conversation today, over the past few years, Scott has become heavily involved in the school, and I would say as a model alum in many different ways. And so I asked him to come talk a little bit about what he's done and in particular, why he got involved and what the outcomes have been. So Scott, I will turn things over to you. Thank you again so much for joining us. 
It's my pleasure, Temple. But before I start, I have to ask you one question because it's killing everybody who's listening in. They want to know what show you wrote for so they can <laughs> go on to Netflix and watch it. So you can uh, go to Netflix. The show is called Half and Half uh, with an ampersand. Uh, so you can uh, search that up. Uh, I think episode 19 is the first one I wrote. Uh, and I think there's six that I wrote uh, and they're 80 something episodes. So yes, feel free. Go, go check it out. <laughs> awesome. Thanks, Temple. I, I'm hoping they can see my screen to, uh, as a PowerPoint uh, showing at this stage. Not yet. Uh, did you do share screen, Scott? All right, let me go back to that. And here we go. Can you see that now? It's coming. There it is. You're set. Awesome. Uh, so Dr. Sweetser, who just made her cameo, uh, helped put together a few slides uh, for me as I've had the opportunity to work very close with her over the last few years. Uh, it says here, you know, as Temple is talking about storytelling, this really all starts with storytelling. Uh, and I'm just honored to be able to chat with everybody today. Uh, what I wanted to be able to share uh, as we go through uh, the PowerPoint is, to me, when you talk about storytelling, it's about mentorship and it's about teamwork. Uh, I look at Glenn Broom as a mentor extraordinaire and his, his goal when he was at JMS and, and helping uh, students was to mentor them and help them grow. And that it, it, he had done so much for me that when the development uh, staff here had asked myself and my partner, Scott Allison, actually had made donations to the Broom Center to help kick it off. Uh, but I wanna start a little bit farther back, uh, back to 1991 uh, when I was graduating. And there's a few friends of mine, I think they might even be listening in today, Teresa Leader Anderson and Wendy Hovland, that we had a group and the three of us had several classes together, worked as a team, had all been members of PRSSA, which was a student chapter of the I can't talk, Public Relations Society of America. And we put on events on campus and that uh, through our mentorship from uh, professors like Dr. Dozier and, and Dr. Broom, that it really helped us get a vision for where we might want to go when we got out of school. Uh, in one of the classes that I had, uh, Dave Nuffer, who's in the right in the right in the right side of this photo in the middle, Dave uh, owns a significant firm in San Diego before he had passed away. And Dave had come to our class and started talking to us. And I had asked him a question, probably too bluntly, because he was a huge Padres fan. And I had asked why he had lost the San Diego Padres as an account. And he looked at me and he said, what's your name? And I said, Scott Pansky. Hmm. He nodded his head. And I realized I didn't ask that question right. So after class, I introduced myself again and apologized. He said, no, I wanted you to learn. And I wanted to share these different experiences with you. When I graduated, he was one of the first folks that I wanted to, to meet and to talk to. And he actually did an informational interview with me. And he looked at my resume and I said all these great things. I'm on the homecoming court. I was a resident advisor. I was very active in school. And he got his red pen out and crossed a lot of that out. And he said, Scott, I want to know where you interned. What were the results you had? Can you write? Back to what Temple said. Can you write? What is your critical thinking? What is the impact? That you had and he had me rewrite my entire resume. Uh, I still didn't get a job with him and back in 1991 there was a recession nothing like what the students are going to be facing today. Uh, Elizabeth Pexy is in uh, the left side of the picture. Elizabeth uh, was a mentor of mine through PRSA. Uh, spent hours with me helping me brainstorm uh, providing job leads here in Los Angeles uh, but I really wanted to stay in San Diego. And after editing my resume, I got a phone call from Glenn and he said, hey, there's a company called the Gable Group with Tom Gable. They're looking at hiring somebody. And I said, yeah, I saw that in the newspaper. It was a biotech job. And he says, no, no, it's a consumer PR job. You should apply. So I submitted my resume and I interviewed with the guy in the bottom left hand corner, a San Diego State alum, Scott Allison. Scott and I have been together now for 30 years between working for the Gable Group down in San Diego to uh, working with a company called Connors Communications that we then acquired their assets uh, a week before September 11th, 2001 to launch Allison and Partners. And today we have 30 offices around the globe 
uh, with 500 employees. And it just, to me, mentorship meant so much. And I really feel like all of us who are on this call can make a difference in mentoring students. And so the development team at San Diego State had reached out to us looking for donations and was always open to doing something, but there was something about just providing an internship that I didn't think was enough. And so I was thinking, you know, what can we do that was more experiential? What could we do that could actually be hands-on for the students? And started conversations with Bailing Shaw several years ago, and it started a, a workshop program where it was kind of like a PR lab. Uh, and then as we'd gone down that path, Dr. Broom passed away. And uh, it was very sad. Uh, he really been uh, a, like a father figure for me while I was at San Diego State. And Dr. Sweetser and I sat down after his uh, service and we started talking about what Glenn would want. What kind of impact could we make on our students today uh, that would have significant impact? And she had a capstone class. And when we had talked about the lab that we had worked on earlier, she was saying, Scott, we can turn the capstone class into that type of lab. She invited me to see a class presentation. So at the end of the semester, when they were presenting their uh, work that they had done for nonprofits, I talked to her, I said, that was phenomenal. And we had maybe like 40, 50 people in the audience. And I said, hey, I think we can monetize this class. Your students are doing phenomenal work and they should get paid for that. And I think it's a way we can raise funds for the department. So we started looking at what her program was and she broke it into pieces and we went out and we searched for clients. One of those clients is Kids in the Spotlight, and I'll talk about that in just a moment, uh, but they paid $5,000 for the class to be a sponsor. And now we have uh, Meals on Wheels that we're working with this semester, and we have uh, Goodwill Industries and uh, uh, City Scholars Foundations and others that are lined up to be uh, clients in the spring. So it's exciting that we could actually monetize that, but do really good high quality work. We looked at what kind of experiences could we provide the students and created a road trip uh, that brought the students up to our Seattle office. And then we were gonna do a huge program in LA, which I'll talk about more on the next slide, uh, but COVID came and that stopped that. Uh, we also wanted to create more skill centric programs on as uh, Temple was talking about earlier, we wanted to do a lot of skill centric type of programs. So we were gonna bring them into our San Diego office and help them uh, by doing real hands-on workshops. Uh, and then as we looked at this program, we're seeing how it was evolving. We were looking at what was happening in culture today, that the Broom Center itself should be at the center of this. How do we build the Broom Center brand and make it a national entity for where people would learn about PR? And so what we ended up doing, Kay had an assignment for her students where they actually developed the marketing program around this and, and uh, tied into last year's PRSA national conference that was held here uh, in Southern California. And then it was like, all right, this is a start. How do we reach more students? And now as a, a school that uh, is a Hispanic serving institution, we're actually registered for that. How do we get this to more diverse students? So we're now partnering with Scripps Howard School of Journalism at Hampton University in Virginia, which is a historic uh, black college university. So through this partnership, we're actually gonna have Broom Center fellows from the East Coast that are gonna be associated with the Broom Center in San Diego. So that to me is very exciting. Uh, here's with Kids in the Spotlight, which is a charity based here in Los Angeles. These are foster kids that tell their stories in film and they get real television film directors and producers to help put together the kids products. Uh, you can find a lot of this right now on YouTube. The bus is an example of the tour that we were going to bring the students up to Los Angeles, but we ended up doing a webinar. And in the webinar, we brought in guest speakers from Google and Taco Bell, Netflix, Golan Harris, and that had all of them talk to the students. But when we realized it was virtual, now we could put the Broom Center back on the map and we partnered with PRSSA nationally. And we had 200 students that were on the call. And what was great about this is all the speakers and myself made ourselves available to edit resumes, to provide counsel and advice. I guess I had 60 students that had signed up for that program. As we look at some of the results of this, you'll see quotes uh, from the charity Kids in the Spotlight, a uh, charity uh, who 
their CEO was so impressed. We had more than a hundred people watch the presentation that the students did. Their founder was just floored as well as their board members who participated in the program. The impact is still there with the charities. They're implementing the strategies that students had built for them. And currently uh, they're working with Meals on Wheels. When I saw this quote, I was kind of floored because this was an email that he sent to Kay, but then uh, he copied it to his referral source at Goodwill Industries and told her that he owed her a meal for setting them up. And then in addition, the Goodwill Industry contact said, I can't wait till it's our turn. So the buzz is starting to build and the impact of what we're doing with our students is incredible. So I, I can't say how proud I am of that. And then a subtle uh, response, which to me is probably the most exciting for our agency, is Scott Allison and I both know the kind of teaching that happens in San Diego State as alums, but we weren't getting a lot of applications for our company, and we'd be a great benefit if we could hire some SDSU students. This is Alexis Hopper. She was on the bus tour that we ended up flying the students up to Seattle. He met with our real estate team and built a relationship with one of my vice presidents and, and stayed in touch with her. And two months ago, she was hired as an account coordinator. So the impact for us, for the students is real. And the more we can do to help uh, JMS and the Broom Center, we're there to do it. So uh, that's a, a quick update on some of the work we're doing and that uh, this is lined up for the next several years. Temple, thanks for giving me a few minutes to share this information. Absolutely. And I wanted um, to, to briefly turn it over also to Kay Sweetser, because we've, we've heard a lot about her as, as the leader of the Broom Center, um, just to, to talk about the impact that Scott's had on, on everything that you're trying to do. You know, I have been so energized since Temple got here, and I'm really excited about where we're going. Um, Scott is way too kind in uh, giving me um, any of this credit uh, in, in doing these things. Um, you know, I, I definitely feel like I need to hire Scott as my publicist now um, because he's saying a lot of fantastic things. So um, as much as I want to take credit for a lot of the, the different programs and um, things that, that Scott has worked through, um, I, I can't. Um, you know, these have all been um, team built ideas and uh you know, late night phone calls and last minute back and forth editing um, things of, of just trying to make sure that we can put on some really great programs for our students. And so Scott's already talked about the capstone experience. Um, and, and that is important because with these um, clients paying in um, for the opportunity to be a capstone client, they're paying into an, an endowment. And so this means that this money is constantly going to be, um, you know, re-energizing into our student body. And so it's not just an investment in today, it becomes that long-term investment um, that we need to know uh, that our, our school can continue on and these programs can continue on and funding and being funded. Um, you know, the... Uh, the student serving programs have definitely grown over the past year. It was a, it was a big um, bursting type of a year for the Broom Center in particular um, with that 3P series, um, with, you know, what was supposed to be a bus tour and then it turned out to be a virtual webinar and, and we've got um, another one uh, that Scott and I have to get on the books uh, for November um, that he's already promised uh, me. Um, in working with, um, Scott talked a little bit about the other Scott, uh, who is um, Scott Allison. And in working with Scott Allison, um, he helped fund the Broom Student Fellows Program. And so Alexis, uh, who they hired over at um, Allison and Partners, um, was a part of this inaugural class of the Broom Student Fellows. And so we kind of looked at this as an opportunity. Um, you know, I remember my, my very last time I ever had the opportunity to see Glenn. And I had gone over to his house um, for uh, a breakfast and he made this amazing, uh, they were like, um, uh, I don't know, blue corn um, pancakes or something. I mean, it was just, it was like a gourmet meal that he had just whipped up and it was fantastic. And we talked about what my vision was coming in as the director of the Broom Center because I was brand new at that point. 
And I also listened a lot to, to what his vision was for what he had wanted when he created the Broom Center in 2012. And in doing this, I got the chance to hear some of his stories and I thought, man, you know, we have got to get Glenn more involved with these students because um, he is everything that I'm not. You know, he is a, a, a loving, caring, positive um, educational force where I'm a drill instructor and do it harder and better. And I see some of uh, my former students here um, on the, the list of attendees and, and you know, it may look nice, but it ain't, right? <laughs> um, so, um, you know, I really knew that the students um, thrived under the type of um, leadership and um, professorship that, that Glenn gave. Um, and then, you know, had all these great plans for an internship program where he would kind of lead it and, and, and he left us a completely unexpected. And so in, in sort of like a, what I keep calling my, my love letter to Glenn was the creation of uh, the Broom Student Fellows Program where it took all the best pieces of what um, Glenn offered to the students. And it's part finishing school for PR students, um, professional development opportunities. Uh, Scott talked about how I took um, these four exceptional um, young practitioners up to Seattle um, where uh, Scott Pansky put us in contact with a ton of amazing folks um, and they just rolled out the red carpet for us. And um, those women were so energized about their career and were like, you know, I, we just never thought past really graduation or internships. And, and now, you know, the world uh, is at their feet. And uh, we did a whole lot of uh, amazing things with the Broom Student Fellows. And so this year it's gonna grow as Scott was kind of telling you a little bit telegraphing. Um, and we're gonna have um, a companion group um, at uh, Hampton University. So we have the HSI serving the Latinx community in San Diego State. And then we have um, Hampton University, the HBCU. And, and this is our opportunity, at least in my, my field, public relations, for us as JMS to become leaders in making sure that for the next 30 years, we have more change and growth than an increase of 5% you know, diversity, which is what it has been in the past 30 years. Public relations looking like K Sweetser, our day is done. We need the diversity and we, we have an opportunity to really inspire um, our young students from communities of color to go into our industries. And with programs like this, we're gonna be able to do that. And we're gonna be able to knock down any of the barriers that they have in their way to do it. And then we're gonna grow even further um, by seeing you know, how we can just help the profession as a whole become more diverse um, because we are leaders. You know, part of that leadership um, is evidenced in uh, my brand new colleague, he's been here a year, Dr. Patrick Thielen. Um, when he came to JMS, he was a brand new, um, fresh out of school PhD. He went to the University of Florida, so you know he's brilliant because that's where I went. Um, and uh, he came in and within his first year, he became accredited in public relations because he knew that APR is important to the public relations faculty. And he knew that it um, sends a signal to the students that he is teaching, that he's a lifelong learner and that you can always strive to be the best practitioner possible. And you can always grow even when, you know, somebody thinks you're at the top of your game because you're a fancy professor, um, there's still room for growth. And so he's leading in the classroom and he's also teaching um, PR and media studies and journalism classes in Espanol. That's as much Spanish as, as you're going to get out of me today. Um, another thing we did at JMS to uh, to do, you know, some of the the um, leadership uh, within the community is we worked with fantastic partners. I see Stacy Ridingers on this call, um, and she has been a great partner at Public Relations Society of America, San Diego, Imperial Counties, in. We just finished today, this morning, um, a five webinar series on disinformation um, aimed at creating media literacy. And so these were initially thought of as um, media literacy webinars that we would do locally. And mm, every single one has been national. We've had, I think, um, 30 people, or I'm sorry, 30 plus states represented at the majority of these five webinars from little old San Diego you know, beaming from the Mesa, and there it goes. Um, we are making an impact um, in society as a part of this. 
uh, you know, I'll, I'll start to kind of close it down because I know there's going to be some questions in here and uh, this is what happens when you give me a hot mic. Um, I do really want to talk about, though, um, you know, the, the place that, that we have um, at this moment in time um, in America and where we are. You know, one could not have, um, have gone through this summer and not been impacted by the racial reckoning that we are under right now um, with the changes that we see that have to happen in America and the opportunities that allies need to take to ensure that our friends have um, opportunities that they have otherwise um, been prevented from being able to do. And so um, the Broom Center has been really leading forward on that. I'm gonna um, show you um, really quickly one of the different projects that we have that you may be interested in participating in. And so uh, this is the Broom Center website, um, but you can list yourself on what's called the Broom Speakers Bureau. Um, and so this is under the What We Do and Broom Speakers Bureau. And if you would like to make yourself available um, to speak in a, uh, um, any kind of a class, this is actually not just public relations, but if you'd like to make yourself available to speak in any mass communication class, we've been advertising this nationally. An email went out to um, just shy of 300 national deans and directors of mass communication programs right before this semester started talking about the Broom Speakers Bureau and telling them, hey, you know, we need representation in the classroom. And if you um, have professors that look like Hey Sweetser and do not have representation and are part of the problem, then you can come here to find fantastic guest speakers that will add that representation and show our students um, a vision of what they can be when they can see someone succeeding who actually looks like them. Um, so you can uh, uh, go in and I'll put this link in chat because it's a really kind of crazy, uh, you know, crappy long um, Google form link, but you can add yourself to the database and then um, people will be able to search uh, for you in here. Um, and that is probably one of the, the biggest projects um, that we have going. Uh, we've, we've also made sure that um, we've been leading in academia by um, telling other professors how to increase representation, um, how to use your power from the podium in order to make sure um, that uh, you are inclusive in your classes. Um, and that has uh, obviously brought a lot of um, uh, good reputation to JMS in, in that. Um, and the last thing that we've done is we're putting our money where our mouth is. These five webinars that we did, every I planned four of them. I, I specifically picked out each person who was gonna be on them. And of the ones that I planned, um, we had amazing representation in every single webinar. And so it was, it was not a, um, a typical, you know, sea of old white men talking about the news industry. I'm sorry if you're an old white man out there and you're in the news industry. Um, but, you know, it was um, a very energized discussion um, that really was more representative of uh, the world that we live in. Um, and it was fantastic. And it's not, I mean, I, I'm going to tell you guys about it, but it's not something that we're going around and we're tooting a horn about. But I want you to know that, that we see these things and we're being deliberate and we are um, using our power from the podium to make good positive uh, changes. And so um, as I kind of like wrap up my, my little bit of comments, um, I want to say that the things that we have accomplished here, specifically with the Broom Center, um, with me, really happened because of our alumni partners. Um, we have great alumni, just like you, definitely like Scott, um, who are engaged and who actually know what's happening in the industry before it even happens. Um, and so bring your ideas to us. Tell us, what's, tell us what's up on the horizon. Tell us what's coming up um, and, and let that light a fire within us too. Because you know, um, if it's been a while, you don't have to worry about how, how to incorporate it into a class. Like that's our job, right? We will figure out a way. We will find a way to yes, to make sure that we can um, incorporate these great ideas that you have. So bring us your ideas. Let us feed off your energy. You don't have to worry about how it's gonna work in a class. We'll figure that out. Um, you know, there is not one part of any of our media industries that is not collaborative. 
There's not one part where you don't have someone else telling you, mm, change this word, or you know, you forgot your comma, or you have an extra comma. Um, and the same thing is happening here. Um, JMS needs you. Uh, we know it's been a while since you've been on the Mesa. It's been a while since we've been on the Mesa, right? Um, but we definitely need you to be involved in helping us shape this next generation of media professionals. Um, so with that, I'll be quiet and open it um, up to, I guess, questions and turn it back over to my boss. Over to you, Temple. <laughs> well, thank you very much, Kay. You could see, you know, when I started this whole thing off talking about how I knew about the school and I knew about the talented faculty, Kay is who I'm talking about. And, and you know, this morning we did wrap up these five webinars on disinformation. And that started as an email from Kay saying, hey, you know, we've got an election going on. There's so much news uh, about disinformation. Maybe we should do something, maybe a webinar. And then with Kay's energy, that it spun into five webinars, all sorts of different partners, a lot of different news organizations, PR agencies. Um, and that's really a service, you know, as a leader, we want to talk about disinformation um, from the news perspective, from social media, as a PR agency, it, it impacts all of us. And so I really appreciate you, Kay. Um, and, and also just the, the contribution Scott has made. And one of the reasons I wanted to have Scott on here was in my experience as an alum of some different universities, I get um, every fall, I get a phone call the area codes 336, which I know is Winston-Salem, which means Wake Forest is calling me. It's their annual, please give me money. And I think that's a lot of experiences is that's that's how you hear from your university and that's the involvement that they're looking for. Uh, and so that's, you know, that's great. That's really important. Obviously, uh, as public institutions, we always need more money, but that's just a way. And that's, uh, you know, it can have a tremendous impact, but using, your organization or leveraging your connections, right? So Scott's talking about, we've got people from Google and all over the place talking to students. And that's just something that they're willing to do because Scott gives them a call and says, hey, do you wanna do, you wanna do this with me? And they say, sure, because everybody or most people actually like engaging with college students. They like to give back. Everybody had uh, a professor uh, that they remember, uh, and many of those memories are positive. <laughs> um, and so, you know, there are just so many different ways that you can be connected to the program that it can really make a strong impact on students uh, and their lives, because uh, that's 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 what we're here for. So feel free if you do have any specific questions, just to drop them in the chat. Uh, when Kay, Scott and I get on Zoom calls, we can just sit here and just sing each other's praise for hours and, uh, and just go back and forth and talk about great things. So we're happy to do that, um, but we also are respectful of your time. Yeah, Scott. I, I just wanna share one more thing because it complements what uh, you both were just saying. Uh, the relationship with Hampton University started off, our agency is trying to build our diversity. And so we had reached out to Hampton. And when we heard some of the things that they were doing and they weren't doing, before I even talked to Hampton I, uh, further, I called up Kay and I said, Kay, I have this crazy idea. Tell me what you think about it. And do you remember the sister city program, you know, where a city would partner with a city in another country? He said, yeah. I said, has there ever been anything like a sister city program for universities? He says, no, not that I'm aware of. And so what if we partnered San Diego State with a school like Hampton University? They have the Scripps Howard journalism program, but they don't have a big emphasis in PR. And I think that we could fill that gap for them. God, that's an amazing idea. Like she jumped on it and said, all right, let me see if I can set up a conference call. So I put both organizations together and you never know I was on the call anymore. It was literally the dean of that school and Kay talking and brainstorming in real time until there is now a new program that's in place for the spring. So just to know that that can happen from a phone call in an ideation center, everybody on this call can do those types of things. If you have ideas that you feel would benefit uh, the Broom Center and the DMS program, because it doesn't have to be just PR either. I mean, there's a lot of other programs that are taking place in JMS. So it's like, if you come from broadcast, bring a broadcast idea in. You're coming from journalism, bring in a journalism ideas. You know, how do we partner with the media to de develop programs? There's just so many opportunities. Uh, and anybody has a question, you're always 
welcome to link in with me too. And I'm glad to brainstorm with you, but there's huge opportunities. And what I love is this administration is really excited about these partnerships. Absolutely. And we, and we all, or most faculty have a professional background. Um, and so we're here, we love ideas. You know, we recognize that we only get stronger, the more connections we have, the more brainstorming that happens. And so we can come up with these innovative ideas where suddenly we're, we're partnering with a, a university on the East Coast. This, uh, this winter session, we're actually partnering with a university in India uh, and we're doing an advertising course uh, jointly with them. So they'll have students working together uh, literally across the globe. Uh, and that just, that sprung up out of an idea that someone said, hey, we've got this, this other program who's interested in working with you all. Would you, would you like to do it? And I said, absolutely, let's try it. Uh, I love to experiment uh, and we'll see how it goes. And then we'll, we'll modify it and, and learn some lessons and then apply it to the next time we do something, uh, maybe with Hampton. Um, so absolutely, we love ideas. Um, any, anywhere, any, from anyone, anytime, uh, you know that we are definitely open uh, to ideas. Uh, Scott, um, question for you. I'll ask one more and then I know we're getting close to time and we want to be respectful of your time and, and anyone who's on here is what has been the most uh, surprising thing for you out of your relationship with, uh, with the JMS since you've gotten more involved in the last few years? Well, I've got two answers, uh, and, and I'm sorry for everybody. You have to hear it one more time, but I'm going to say it anyways. Kay is amazing, and I'm not being her publicist. I am not trying to uh, add more compliment than needed, but to note that how receptive she's been to the ideas, to note that she's very hands-on. Like she does, She starts something that she has to complete it, and it has to be done right. Everybody that she works with is prepared. It was interesting. After one of my first meetings with Kay, I went back to the office and I knew one of my employees in the Los Angeles office came from San Diego State. And I said, yeah, I met with Dr. Sweetser. She said, you know Dr. Sweetser? Oh my God, she's so hard. It was the hardest course I ever had. And I said, did you enjoy it? Oh, she's an amazing teacher. She's, she's incredible. Uh, and it just like, brought everything to life. Like, okay, I get this. And so... That to me uh, was just an incredible, what I look at as a partnership. Uh, the other thing that I, I shouldn't say I'm surprised about, but it's probably been my biggest pleasure about the process is getting to know the students. Uh, the students have been incredible. Uh, I've been mentoring students since uh, COVID started. And as I mentioned earlier, this will be the worst economy for the students to come out of, especially our seniors from last year and the seniors this year who are still looking for jobs. And I must have edited the Dave Nuffer style uh, 20, 30 times when talking with students and the students have been so open and the students, they don't realize sometimes if they say they're with SDSU, that an SDSU alum would look at their resume or take an informational meeting with them. And so when I've given them this guidance, not necessarily about finding a job immediately, but just open some doors so that you can get referrals and meet more people that I found out that for a student to send an email, it might take 30 to 45 minutes just to brainstorm exactly what to say and to say it perfectly. And I'd say, like, you don't have to do that. I've got three daughters. Uh, one's a senior in college, another is a sophomore in college, the other is um, a, a sophomore in high school. And that I've watched my oldest daughter ag agonize, just like these students were. So it's given me such a great insight. And I would tell them, if you had just said, I'm in Dr. Sweeter's class, that I would look at it. I'm a San Diego State alum. I said, I'll look at it uh, because I want to help. And that when I see the quality of the resumes and I see the capstone work that they've done or I've seen their internships, what I found, which was really interesting, and Dave caught this on my resume, I would say I help clients do this and I help clients do that. And I realized I never said the name of my clients so that the agency I was applying to never knew the type of work I was doing. So as I'm telling this to the students, I say, yes, put kids in the spotlight in. Wow, you interned at Qualcomm. Put that in there so they can see that because it'll have impact. So that they were receptive. Then they send their resumes back to me. Scott, 
is this okay? Said, this is great. Keep going with it. But I always make sure they realize my edits are subjective, just like anybody here. If you're going to make a comment on somebody's resume, it's what do the students take out of it? But they're hungry, they're passionate, they're sharp, and they're smart. And I think all of us here, if we can play a role as a mentor for students, Elizabeth Pexy, if you're on this call still, Elizabeth, I, I can't tell you, <laughs> I'm almost in tears trying to find a job and her just saying, Scott, stick with it. You can do this. You're smart. Like, I, I feel like she might have looked at me the way I'm looking at today's SDSU students. And I just feel if I can give back like she and Glenn did, th th those have been my most pleasant surprises. So I'm very excited about it. I love that. Um, and I love how you talk about how our students are hungry because they are hungry and they are scrappy and they, are, they will get in there and work. Um, they are not afraid of that hard work. Uh, many of them being first generation students, as you guys probably remember um, from your own college experience, right? Um, so we had a question in the um, Q&A box, which is where you should put your question if you have one from Stacy, And um, she asked it to Temple, but um, I, I know the answer to this one. So I'm just gonna write Temple's narrative for him. Um, so Stacy was asking about the old Arrow Media Group. Um, and, and this was a um, original um, donation that Scott had made back in the 2013, 2014 um, timeframe um, to establish Arrow Media Group, which was a student run agency. Um, what we do now in the, in the um, client um, capstone experience um, for public relations replaces um, Arrow uh, Media Group because we are bringing in clients. Um, they are still working in the agency model. Um, they are doing time cards every single week. And when they don't do their time card, I tell them that their agency just didn't get paid. And um, if their agency didn't get paid, do they think that they're gonna get paid? So I, I see Mary Carrera Moreno on here and I'm sure she's gonna be very happy about that, but I'm telling people, get your time cards in. Um, and uh, they are getting that full agency type experience and they are implementing campaigns, which is something that they weren't doing um, in, the, in the campaigns class um, pre-2014 before I got here. And so um, we, don't, we don't have plans to create that because we actually um, have created it through this um, uh, new way that we're doing campaigns. Great question. And Stacy asked a second question about uh, preparing students for careers and managing social media for companies and nonprofits. Kay might have a really better answer to that uh, than I do, because you you know the curriculum honestly better than I do at this point. Um, but I'll actually chime in and say something uh, that Kay doesn't know, which is that I um, actually just submitted a special topic score. So this would be for next year on a on a class called Media for Social Change, uh, which I think very much ties into this idea for uh, using media for in particular nonprofits and social movements. Uh, so it's something we're definitely aware of and something I wanna push, but do you have a, you probably know better than I do in terms of uh, managing things like social media in our curriculum. Yeah, absolutely. We do have a um, social media course, um, and I can't remember the name of it, but it's basically like a community manager course. And, and um, Dr. Becky Nee teaches that one. Um, and then we have um, some analytic courses, wh which are more than just analytics, because it's um, more of like uh, taking on a client, getting into their Google Analytics, um, doing A-B testing, and, and trying to create a campaign moving forward to improve them. Um, and then when it comes to um, just working with nonprofits in general, um, you know, that's been a really big thing in academia since as long as I've been in academia. And I know that I look so young, but I'm not. Um, and so uh, it's been at least, you know, 20, maybe 30 years. It's been, um, you know, this idea of uh, community based service learning. And so um, the majority of the clients that we have in the PR capstone are um, nonprofits, um, charities, um, you know, just groups, organizations um, that are not for profit. Um, so uh, we are definitely teaching them um, how to get out there, how to get scrappy, how to um, make the most of in-kind donations, um, you know, how to message um, and um, just, you know, get out there and, and represent your client and become stewards, right? Because that's one of the things that's really important to us. If you look at our um, mission statement, I put a link to it already in, in the chat. If you look at our mission statement and our values, it is about developing um, the next generation of communicators as stewards of democracy and society. And so um, that is a really important component. Great question, yeah. Stacey. 
Yeah, and Stacy, I know I owe you an email. You emailed me yesterday, so I'll publicly acknowledge that. So you'll, you'll get one uh, probably later today or, or first thing tomorrow at the latest. And I know this has been uh, fairly PR heavy, but we also, if we're talking about social media, that's a, an instrumental part of journalism. Uh, we have a whole course just for social media and, and journalists uh, because it is how news spreads for for better or worse news is driven by social media and so that's that's something we we talk a lot uh, about as well before um, we close up because i feel like you're you're, yeah. getting, you're getting ready to move us out the door here temple um i think it's really important for everyone i i kind of said this um quickly uh a little while ago but it is really important for you to understand how we are um capitalizing on the fact that we are a hispanic serving institution that's a federal designation that we have had for 20 plus years, 30, almost 30 years maybe. Um, we've had it for a long time um, being an HSI. So that's a really big deal. We are an, a border town, an international border town. We have first generation students. You know, we have, we have so many um, reasons to embrace uh, the Latinx culture and um, you know the cross-border movements that are happening right now and we're doing it in our classrooms and so we had a, um, a journalism course I think it was actually called like cross-border reporting um, we've had uh, several I think um, the past few years we've at least had it um, taught once a year and there may be some semesters where it was taught consecutively um, where we actually teach our uh, media classes in Spanish. Um, and so it's just a really great opportunity for students to not have to translate, um, you know, what they learn in English into a whole new culture and language um, to do their practice, right? And so if you can learn to write your news stories in Spanish and you can learn to communicate um, to your target publics in Spanish, um, then you're just, you're taking out that middleman of that translation. Um, and that's really important. And that's something that our school has been leading with um, since as long as I've been here, because this program was here prior to me coming in 2014, so. Hey, Kay, would you add one more thing about the program with military and helping veterans? Yeah, I, I saw um, we have Carl Redding, uh, who is, he may still be on here. I'm not quite sure. Um, but so uh, for, oh my gosh, I think it's like 16 years, we have had active duty military public affairs officers from the Navy and the Marine Corps come um, and be sent by their service um, to our master's program. Stacy was one of them as well. Um, Stacy Reidinger, who's asked a couple of questions already. Um, and so they come to us for 10 months. Uh, they get a, a two years worth of a graduate education in 10 months. Um, if you can imagine, they, have, they had to sit with me on Zoom for eight hours a day for four weeks every single day during the summer. How fun was that, do you think? Um, and they leave here uh, a completely transformed, amazing practitioners. They earn their accreditation in public relations, which is a really big thing um, for us in public relations. They earn that while they're here. They have academic um, research experiences where, where they're actually embraced by the academy and they do research, um, top level uh, scholarly research. And so um, we do a lot with our graduate program and the military in, in particular is a really great opportunity for us to again give back. Um, and I myself am a uh, Navy reservist. And so, um, you know, one week in a month, two weeks a year, I go off and play Navy. So um, it is a, it is what brought me to San Diego State was this program because I could finally kind of bring my life together rather than, you know, have my two jobs pull me apart. Awesome. Thank you for highlighting that. And thanks for asking about it, Scott. Uh, and thank everybody. Uh, we are, I know, right at two o'clock. So I want to respect everyone's time. Thank you all for coming. Thank you, Scott, for taking time out of your day to speak to everybody and share your story. And, and Kay also for setting all of this up. Uh, and if you've learned nothing, it's that we want you with us. So bring ideas, bring anything. We're, we're here, we're, we are open uh, to all forms of communication. So find us, help us. And it's the, it's the next generation of media practitioners are in our school right now. And we're ready uh, to just take the school to the next level. So thank you all for being here. And yes, as Stacy said there in the comment, go Aztecs. Thanks Temple.